welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Greetings from Gray Court, South Carolina. Long ways from you folks, but I count it a privilege to be in your presence today, even via a video. Now, in Scripture, there are all kinds of examples I can give you, but I'm going to give you one that I just recently spoke on. It's real fresh in my brain, so I want to remind you of what this passage says. Now, I'm going to hold this up kind of high because I don't want you to just have to stare at the top of my bald head. Shiny bald head. It says down in Mark chapter 2. Do any of you have a Bible? You know, if you have a Bible, it'd be a good time. Well, I can wait on you if you want. You know, a lot of people don't know where the books of the Bible are. Well, do you know at the front of every Bible, at least every Bible I've seen, is what's called a table of contents? So here you're new as a Christian. You haven't been reading a whole long period of time. So what you do, you go to the front of your Bible and you can find exactly the page number of the book the preacher is talking about. Then you don't have to, you know, fumble through the whole Bible trying to find this passage, that passage, or the other, and it's right there. It's a great tool as far as reading and studying and really knowing where certain passages are, and again, not missing what the preacher or the teacher is presenting to you. So, if you haven't found it yet, just hold on and listen. I'm going to read it for you. But in Mark chapter 2, it says, And again, he entered into Capernaum. Now, who's he? Well, it's talking about Jesus. It says, He entered into Capernaum, and after some days it was noise that he was in the house. In other words, it was the talk of the town. Jesus is over there. And boy, people wanted to get to Jesus because he's the miracle worker. He's the one that's just, again, uh, doing a work of God like we've never seen before. But let me continue on with the story or we'll run out of time here. It says, And straightway many gathered together, insomuch there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing uh, one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. This guy's sick. He couldn't walk in and of himself. Someone had to bring him. He's been this way since he was four years old. Now, I'm not sure how old he is at this point, but let me continue on in verse four. It says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press. What, what, can y'all tilt your head and go, what? Yeah, let me hear it, right? What? Yeah, what, what's the press? Is that the local newspaper or something? Those aren't real popular or out there too much today either. No, it's just a great crowd. They, they couldn't get in to bring this guy to Jesus. It says they uncovered the roof where he was. How'd they do that? Take the shingles off, you know, and take off the plywood. If you ever seen what a roof is today. Well, back then they were flat and they were slates and, and you could just kind of push the dirt away and take off that, you know, protection of roof covering there. And that's what these guys were up to. Pretty creative and very much determined to get this done. They uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the let down the bed where the where the sick of the palsy lay. Well, when Jesus you think that caused a bit of commotion? Yeah, I think so. You know, dirt's probably falling down, you know, like dandruff on the shoulders or whatever. And I'm sure it's stirring up the stuff as these guys are trying to get this guy to Jesus. I'd say that's kindness, isn't it? Then it goes on to say, in verse 5, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now there's these religious guys. Yeah, they, they didn't like what they were hearing and, and probably not liking what they were seeing because they weren't in control of the situation. But here's what they say. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Now see, we know something that they didn't know at this point. Jesus is God, God incarnate. That means God in the flesh. And he most certainly has the power and the wherewithal to forgive sins. 
It goes on in verse 7, it says, Why doth this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Well, immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or say, Arise, take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of God, the Son of Man, hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say to thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Now, it wasn't kind of like, oh, let's wait to see if this works or this finally gets fully cooked. No, it says, and immediately, like, boom, immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth from them all insomuch they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw on this fashion. You know what that means in our conversation? We ain't never seen anything like this before. Yeah, they're, they're wow. They're blown away. Here's this guy. They've probably known him his whole life. He, he couldn't walk. He, he had this incurable disease, and boom, through the power of God's working, he's walking out of the place. That's a wowing moment that these people were blessed to observe. Now, the question is, how did this guy get to the place to have the power of God set forth in his heart and give forth a testimony of God's working in his life personally? Because someone cared. Yeah, someone cared. Folks, I think the problem today is we care, but we really don't care enough. You know, we are selfish people. And boy, we got to battle that, and we will battle that until we die. But through the power of God, we've got to have this kind of thinking and this kind of heart. I must, I must, I must get people to Jesus. C can you say that with Mr. Maynard? I must, I must, I must get people to Jesus. That's what we're here to do. You know, last week I was preaching in a family conference and I gave them this challenge. You know, folks, why did Jesus come to this earth? Well, he came to seek and to save the lost. And why did he leave us behind? You know, when we got saved, boom, we could be taken to be with Jesus in heaven for all eternity, but he's left us here on the earth. Why? So we can seek and save the lost. So we can get people to Jesus. So they can know him as Savior then have him as their Lord and, and do ministry unto others and be used of God in a phenomenal, impacting, eternal way. And we get to be a part of that process. All I can say for that is amen. And again, I say amen. But folks, we must, we must, we must get people to Jesus.